Hi, uh, my name is Randall Clapper. Uh, as I just mentioned, um, I'm a instructor at the Software Guild for online. Um, been doing .NET for uh, several years. Um, you know, I I started getting in more into uh, front end space. I'm no front end UI expert, but I started getting into uh, React, Angular, uh, Vue. I tend to gravitate towards React uh, as my uh, learning choice right now, um, and uh, I got into SignalR doing uh, some games, um, multiplayer games uh, for board games. So uh, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is just going to be about uh, getting started with uh, SignalR, what SignalR is, um, you know, what it supports, what it doesn't support, uh, and then a, a quick demo. Um, that should take us roughly about an hour, a little more. I hope that you guys have questions. I'll do my best to answer. I won't BS you guys. If I don't know something, I'll let you know I don't know. And I'll, I'll make sure to post it uh, on the uh, Meetup's comments afterwards. So I will find the answer for you. All right. Cool. All right. So SignalR uh, is basically it's a .NET uh, framework. Um, thing that allows you to be able to do real-time uh, web applications. So many of you have probably done some kind of development where you're uh, you have a list of let's say uh, patients. Uh, the the patients uh, need to be uh, shown on the screen. Uh, one get one gets submitted. Uh, either you're doing a constant pull to see if there's any new new uh, patients to show on screen. Um, or you have having the user press a refresh button. Um, that's typically not something that uh, in modern day uh, is, is user friendly. So what I, uh, I found is that SignalR allows you to have that real-time application uh, communication through WebSockets. Does anyone here know what WebSockets are? No. So WebSockets just allow you to basically um, it's a protocol that uh, connects your client and server um, and keep that connection alive. So normally you take a, an HTTP call and say, hey, do you have this data for me? The server goes, yes, I got that data for you. Here it is. And hangs up the phone. Forgets all about that you called, called and asked for that. With WebSockets, this allows you to say, hey, do you got any data? I'll stay on the phone. Give me data. Right? The server will go, well, here's some data upon you know, your connection. Uh, stay on the line. I might have some more for you. Uh, at that point, you can then, from the server, uh, make remote server, uh, remote procedure calls to your JavaScript function. So I can now call, hey, go add this patient to your list. Or, hey, that patient just got discharged. Go ahead and take that patient off the list. And things like that can now be... Uh, handled from the server side to your client without the client having to make that request uh, to you know do the check. All right. So to make this work, um, there's some server things that you you need to do. Uh, Signal R has two versions. So you got the old version, uh, which uses the .NET framework, uh, just with the, Anything in the .NET full framework, you'll need uh, these platforms to be able to run it. With SignalR2, it's written on .NET Core. .NET Core can run just about anywhere. Uh, it's supported on 4.5 and up. Any questions about support? I see a lot of heads shaking now, so I'm going to move on. All right. So, client support-wise, uh, we we actually care about um, so WebSockets, Internet Explorer 10 Plus, um, most every every browser, the current version minus one, is typically going to be supported by the Signal R team. That does not mean that hey, I work at some company that still uses Internet Explorer 6. You know, can I still use this? The answer is yes. All right. And the reason why that that still works is that it, it allows you 
to uh, fall back to long polling. So it will handle that transition to uh, go ahead and connect to your server and then go, okay, well, I don't support web, web sockets. So it will handle the, the constant, okay, you got anything? You got anything? You got anything? You got something. And it will make that transition seamless for you. Just keep in mind, if you are using an old browser, um, they only support this. So if there's something that's going wrong, uh, you're, you're going to go to Stack Overflow. But that's where we go anyway. So um, support-wise, keep that in mind. Yep. So this might, was the next subject of saying it may run uh, without any major issues. Um, it's just they don't actively test those older browsers. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure you could. So you can check to see if the... Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. Wow, I really blew through that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm a little nervous. I haven't been up on a meetup for a bit. So. Yeah, it looks. So all these, yeah. So it, it will fall back through all of these um, in case, for whatever reason, you're you're so far behind um, or can't support it. Uh, it. It will try its best to support you. So that that was one of the the biggest sells uh, for me is that no matter where I go, uh, you know, I don't have to handle it. The the framework does. Before I get into a demo, I know I went really fast. Uh, if I you know, do talk fast, please let me know. Um, is there any questions uh, or any things that you guys are interested in sig signal R uh, that I can answer before we get into a, uh, it's a chat application I'm doing? All right. Huh? Onwards and upwards. All right. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do with the demo is uh, I'm going to show you basically, I already have a 2019 uh, application made. Uh, I'll walk you through the first, you know, steps and then switch over to mine so you don't have to watch me, you know, type everything. Um, we're going to be using the React template uh, that is provided by Visual Studio uh, 2019. Uh, we'll import uh, the SignalR client. Uh, using npm. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to create your first hub. Uh, hubs are a way of your server saying uh, the, this is my um, connection. Uh, you connect to this and then from there you can push out any uh, additional calls or um, functions that you want to talk between your client and your server, your server and your client. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and I uh, dig into the uh, React template, create a, our chat component, um, and have it connect through the hub connection builder, uh, and run the application, and hope that it works. So, uh, with demos, if it doesn't work, uh, it, there's a GitHub that does. So. Yes. All right, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll go into the creation of a project, show you what I'm talking about when what, getting into uh, building an ASP.NET uh, core application with React, and then I'm going to shut that down and go to the one that's already finished. All right. Uh, what I've just done is I clicked on 
uh, create a new project. Uh, over here on the left, I already have a SP.NET Core web application. Uh, if you do not see that on your left, um, you can always uh, search it by going to the web here. Uh, typically, it's the first thing that pops up. Or you can go ahead and search uh, in templates saying ASP.NET Core. And it should show up. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Uh, name my project uh, Fast Demo. You can name it whatever you would like. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Uh, this will take a few moments. I am offline, so hopefully this works. It should. I already uploaded on on GitHub, so I uh, just oh yeah no 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 I've done that before that was a mistake so um so here if you do not have the React JS template uh, you can be able to download these from Microsoft uh, this is nothing up my sleeve I promise I didn't go create this um, I'm gonna just select the regular JS template. Uh, and hit next or create and it goes and creates and sets it up there's a few things that we're going to have to you know get into to make sure that this you know works for us uh, and that is uh, using uh, cores does anyone here not know what cores stands for or really know what that is okay. sounds good we, all right so um, let me go ahead and switch over to mine. All right, first things first, uh, what I'm going to uh, be doing is uh, there's a couple uh, packages. Um, no, 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 please go ahead. So I, I've only done it in three. Uh, the core is in three uh, for, yeah. So I, I take it as 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I, I, maybe 2-1 uh, and two, 2-2, two, two, there was some weird things. But I've, I've only worked in 3-4. Uh, yep, no, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, so Chorus is cross-origin uh, cross uh, scripting. Uh, basically, it's the uh, best way I can explain it is uh, it's preventing an attacks from a different origin. So if you make a request, uh, let's say you, you live on uh, www.google.com, uh, and someone makes a request to your server from another uh, origin, let's say www.bing.com, um, and you want to make sure that those that are making the request comes from the origins that you're approving of. Um, so uh, that way no one can inject uh, malicious code uh, in, into your request or into your server. Yes. Font size, yeah. Yep, no problem. Is that good or too too big? Okay, cool. All right. So uh, let me get over here. Um, first things first, uh, SignalR uh, is coming from the ASP.NET uh, SignalR. Let me uh, pull that from the hubs so I can show that. There we go. So this is from the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core uh, SignalR package. Uh, I'm offline, so that's why I'm not showing it in the NuGet package. Um, you can be able to pull it uh, and install it. Uh, the next thing that uh, to know is once you have it added to your your project, uh, you want to go ahead and get, jump into your startup and be able to tell uh, your services that you are going to use uh, SignalR. It has to know about your requests and how to handle uh, the web sockets uh, from an MVC point point of view. Um, you can also see that I have uh, cores here. Um, that I'm adding. I'm just 
basically I have a course uh, policy and I'm allowing uh, this particular port uh, to come in. All right, so any request from uh, localhost in that port is good to connect to my hub. Further down, uh, this is going to be in the configure method. Um, I'm going to go ahead and after I configure my endpoints for my uh, controllers, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go ahead and use that course policy I defined earlier. And then following that, uh, this is something that we would have done um, you know, after we created the, the hub. I'm just uh, making mention here. I'll come back to it. Uh, here, this is where you're, any hubs that you have in your application that your clients can connect to, uh, you have to define here. Um, have, have many of you done uh, a React application inside ASP.NET Core? Uh, seeing a lot of heads shaking now. So uh, you can use the use spa. Uh, this basically uses a single page application. Uh, so, uh, when you start your project, uh, this will run ASP.NET Core um, and then go ahead and run your application just like you would on an NPM run right, or NPM start. Um, you tell it what folder that this your application uh, lives in. Um, and from there, you also tell it what NPM uh, command that you want to run. So by default, it puts it into the client app folder, which is living right here. Um, and this just looks like a regular uh, React application. Uh, I have a source folder. I have a components folder. Um, so it's off, it gives you a counter, a fetch data, a home, layout, uh, navigation menu with a, a basic uh, app JS. Um, uh, many of you are familiar with React and how this it gets bootstrap ish. Okay, so basically your app's going to uh, get bootstrapped here. Um, this is the the start of your your pay. Well, actually. This is the, the start of your uh, React app. Uh, so all React is is basically it's a, it's a component. Um, it this looks like HTML. Uh, it's not. It's known as uh, JSX, uh, Java Script. Uh, I don't know what the X stands for actually. Um, skipping my mind. Um, basically. It looks like HTML to make it easier for you uh, as it's going to compile down into uh, function calls um, that will help you render uh, HTML. Right. Um, and it renders on something known as a um, virtual DOM. Uh, and from there, it can be able to do comparisons uh, and updates on that DOM. Um, much, much faster than actually having to manually go and change the DOM um, and evaluate whether or not the text that you just entered should be modified here, here, and here. Any questions about JSX and components? Yeah, I know that was kind of a 50,000 um, review. Um, this has given you uh, routing out of the box uh, using uh, React Router DOM. Um, basically, it wraps your, your app. This app is uh, my component. Um, it will go load up that, that page as it was imported. Uh, that's your app.js. Uh, here, it's uh, going ahead and using um, a route layout. Uh, and matching based off of the uh, path that I give it. So these paths go to these uh, components. Those components can be found in the components folder um, as they're being imported up above. So 
uh, I have my route layout, um, home, fetch data, counter, uh, and so forth. Um, the ones that will be interesting to see, not only just chat, but uh, fetching data. Let me get into that. So, uh, React uses ES6 classes. Uh, it doesn't have to. Um, Webpack will go ahead and uh, pull that down to regular uh, JavaScript. Um, but if you're familiar with ES6, uh, the, the new version of uh, JavaScript, and, well, several years old now, um, you basically have classes. Yay! It's sugar. That's all it is. Um, so I can say uh, I have a class uh, called fetch data. It extends component. Component comes from uh, React. Um, this is just basically an object. Uh, I have a static variable uh, called display name. Uh, I grab that from name. Uh, I have a constructor. If you have a class uh, from component, you should be using a constructor if you have any properties being passed in. Properties in React is just basically your angle uh, tag that looks like a HTML. Any attributes are considered properties. Uh, and they will be passed down into the constructor of that component. Uh, from what you do with that, from there, it's up to you. Uh, they have an idea of state. Uh, state is immutable. Does everyone know what that means here? Yep. So those that don't know what immutable uh, is, that means that it can't change, or should not change. In JavaScript, everything changes. Um, but the, they have the idea that uh, if you have state, it's immutable, so don't mutate or don't change the state, the state directly. Instead, uh, give it a new state um, you know, to change. To give it a new state, let's see if uh, this one has it. There it is. We call set state. So set state will basically say, um, what was my uh, data, um, and then what is the new data. Uh, this one is just providing new data. So you can actually see uh, comparison when doing debugging, the old state and the new state. Uh, in this case, they don't care about the old state and just blast the new state in there. All right. Uh, makes it really easy uh, debugging mainly because I can start seeing a timeline of how my application is handling different states of the, the application. Anytime that you call set state, uh, React is going to call render. Yeah. Render is basically the, uh, the potatoes of this one. It says, hey, I need to return JSX. Whatever you do before then, and in this case, you know, I can do a, uh, a condition to see if it's loading my data. Um, but as long as I'm returning JSX, uh, React is happy. So it's actually returning a, uh, a function. So it, it will eventually uh, get converted into uh, HTML. Yes. Yep. So here, uh, this div, um, and that's another thing to kind of make a mention of, that div looks like HTML. It is not really a true div. That is a function to produce a div. Um, all normal HTML tags must be lowercase. Any components that you create must start with an uppercase as classes start with an uppercase. Mm -hmm. So I can be able to say, hey, I have a div. You know, that div can have children. Um, any attribute here uh, is uh, considered a property of that component. In this case, an h1 tag component. It's already built in. Um, and I can be able to uh, use I guess it's mustache or just curly braces to be able to inject other uh, parts of the uh, JSX. In this case, contents, which is loaded up here, um, 
since this technically returns JSX, this will be valid as it will evaluate to JSX and get returned. All right. Any questions on that? So you can do some interesting things, you know, breaking it out to have uh, functions that return uh, JSX. So in this case, uh, that's what this fetch data is doing. So and this is loading it from the state. So when the state changes, uh, this will get refreshed, uh, and the state changes down below. All right. So let's jump away from JavaScript for a moment uh, and get back into .NET. All right. I talked about uh, you know, SignalR needs a hub or a place for you to connect to. All right. uh, when you start up a, an application, uh, whether it be in React, uh, plain old jQuery, um, you know, HTTP client, uh, it needs a connection that says, hey, I want to pick up that phone and I want someone on the other end to say hello to me. All right. Uh, to do that, we need to go ahead and go into our uh, application. And I've already made uh, a folder here called Hubs. I just like to do this as you know, keep organized. It does not need a folder called Hubs. Um, but try to keep your code organized. So Hubs are slightly different from controllers. As controllers will just you know pick up the phone, give me the data, and hang up on me, all right? I want to be a, be able to talk to you all night long, or for at least the next 15 minutes, uh, right? So doesn't have to be, um, but you know my telephone's going to keep keep track of that for me, all right? If you hang up on me, I'm, my phone's just going to call you right back. All right? With the hub, I'm going to go ahead and uh, inherit from it. Um, and what I have here is just a one single method that is async. It says send all, takes in two parameters. Uh, I can take any parameters. It can also take an ob any objects uh, that you want, as the objects will then uh, get model bind and, and pass through just fine. Right. I'm only showing you a, a chat application, as you can easily find that online uh, if you have any questions. Uh, but you can pass anything into these parameters. Any object that you want can be passed into here. All right. I have a, a board game that uh, I've been putting together, and I, I pass in the player's hand, uh, their health, um, you know, all the information sorry, uh, that uh, you that that state needs to be able to act upon the board. Um, so it j doesn't need just to be strings. I have this uh, client uh, property here uh, that I get from inheriting hub. Uh, this will allow me to be able to uh, call functions on my JavaScript, uh, on my client. So as you see here, I'm actually calling receive message. And I'm sending out uh, two parameters back out to the client. And again, those can be anything that uh, they don't have to be strings. They can be an object. It would get uh, serialized into JSON and uh, moved over to the client side. From that point, um, as long as the function on that side has two parameters, it will fill them in and it'll be good to go. Yeah, the receive message is the actual, the actual function name. Um, you, you should probably, you know, put that into a constant, um, you know, somewhere that's it's not a magic string. But again, this is just a demo and, you know, did it really fast. So. All right. So from clients, I can say dot all. Uh, let me actually give you guys the, uh, the tour here. If I say clients dot, uh, is that text? Um, all right. Windows key plus. Ooh, nice. Fancy. I like that. Thank you. All right. Cool. 
<laughs> no, I'm doing it now. No. Um, all right, so here I can be able to uh, do all accept. Uh, basically, I can um, say, hey, I want to talk to uh, everyone but that guy over there. Let's go ahead and uh, exclude them from this broadcast. Um, I can say uh, the client. So if I want, if the client sends me something, I want to send the just that client back. I can be able to broadcast that that message back to them. Um, I can be able to find out all the clients in a in a particular list uh, with connection ID uh, being passed in. Uh, connection ID. So basically, when you go to connect uh, to the hub, you'll get assigned a GUID uh, or an ID. Uh, for that hub to be able to say, okay, I know who you are um, in this list. You can be able to take that ID and store it in a database, store it in a, a dictionary, store it wherever you want to keep track and assign that ID to a username. Uh, that it does not tie the ID to your identity profile. You have to do that. All, right. um, all it keeps track of is that it has... Uh, connections and those connections have IDs and then it's up to you to go ahead and pull those and do whatever you want with them. Right. Uh, you can also have concept of groups. You can assign groups uh, or IDs to a particular group. So if you think about in a chat application um, and this is more of a thought theory than what I've actually done in demo is uh, I can have rooms. I can assign your connection to a group that is in a particular room. And just with uh, clients, I can uh, be able to exclude all the groups um, that I want. So I can also have this uh, nice method here that says, hey, I want to send to everyone but the caller. So whoever called uh, this function, um, send it to everyone else. I can see uh, who the current user is with connection ID is. Uh, and I can see a list of all the users as well. Uh, this is their IDs. So you will want to take that and convert it to their usernames and then perhaps send that out to the, to the client. Mm -hmm. That's really it. That's all you get in the, the dot clients. All right. These are all async methods. So um, you basically say await, um, send it all out. Uh, it'll handle the connection or the, you know, go talking through the web sockets um, to your client. The client picks it up, sends back, hey, yep, I got it, uh, and moves on to the, the next thing. Client side, right? Correct. Yep. So, and those parameters again can be anything um, that you want, uh, as long as it can be serialized into JSON. All right. So the uh, this object here, clients. Uh, so you get uh, that from the hub. Uh, so from SignalR. So by uh, extending um, this class from hub, you you'll have access to it. Uh, Windows Escape. Fancy. Thank you. All right. So from there, uh, we're pretty much done on the back end. Um, you know, I could log these to a database. I could, you know, put a, you know, a username to a, um, you know, an ID. But I think you guys know what, how to do that by thought. Um, I'm gonna get into the the fun stuff of, you know creating a component that allows me to be able to connect to a, uh, a hub and then from that connection you know tell it to register any incoming uh, request or in this case a received message uh, and when that received message gets uh, triggered I want it to go ahead and append uh, a message or add a message to my array uh, which will call the set state which will call the the render form All right. So to do this, uh, I go over to go 
go over to the client app, go to my source, uh, components. I would right click here, I would say add, and this is just going to be a new item. Let's see, new item right there. And I will just type in JavaScript up here. Select that. Uh, change this to chat. Uh, hit add. I'll oh, try. Uh, let me go ahead and do that one more time. So, new item uh, JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript file. Yep. Um, so, with the, uh, the chat, um, and let me. Uh, so all, all I'm naming is, is uh, chat.js, uh, and again, selecting the JavaScript file, I'm going to go ahead and hit add, um, if I didn't already do this. And what I've done here uh, is created a, a React component, rather than you guys see me you know, type it all out, which I'm sure is riveting. Um, I created a component that basically it uh, exports a, a chat component, a chat class. Uh, that class uh, has properties um, and a set initial state. Uh, that initial state has a nick, a message, um, you know, the current message that the user is typing, um, a message queue, or you know, what is actually available, and the hub connection. To get this to, to work on your application, you're going to need uh, to make sure that you do npm install uh, at ASP.NET slash signalr. Um, again, since I'm uh, not connected, uh, this is just basically going into your command uh, PowerShell. Finding that uh, directory and just type it in npm dash i at ASP.NET slash signal r. Okay. Hit enter and it will go ahead and uh, install that into your uh, application. Be sure that if you're developing this with the ASP.NET Core embedded uh, React application that you're inside your client app folder. I've done that before to where I try to do an npm install into an ASP.NET Core application. It doesn't know what I'm talking about. So make sure you go into your client app folder so it can install the, the node package. Once you have it installed, you're, you're going to be able to go ahead and say import start as signal R from uh, that package. You've now just aliased the entire library as signal R. So what I've done, uh, since I have my imports, uh, this is one of the life cycles of React. Uh, this is component did mount. Uh, basically it says, hey, when I go ahead and load up uh, for the first time, uh, this, is going, this function is going to fire. Um, and what I want to do is just window prompt. What is your name? Uh, once I get your name, I'm going to go ahead and create a new hub connection. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use that alias that I mentioned up above. I'm going to say, hey, I want a new signalr.hub connection builder. With URL, and I'm going to give it that URL uh, that I set up in my startup.cs. So, again, uh, to go back to that, uh, what I'm talking about is this part right here. So you guys, I will come back to it. Uh, this is that route where I said, hey, uh, slash chat hub, uh, you point to the chat hub that uh, we created a moment ago. Yes. Correct. You can have your hub, you know, here and your uh, front-end application somewhere else, as long as you know these two 
uh, cores wise accept each other, you're good to go. Uh, from there, uh, let me jump back to chat.js. Once I have the connection, I'm um, just going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to set the state. Uh, you remember I set the state earlier to null in my constructor. Uh, so here, I'm going to pass in the hub uh, connection and the nick that the user chose, a uh, nickname. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, uh, this dot state dot uh, hub connect uh, connection, go ahead and start. And when you start it, go ahead and log that you've connected. If you error for whatever reason, go ahead and log that you uh, couldn't connect, couldn't establish the connection with a frowning face. Right. Frowning face is important. It does not affect your application, but, you know, user experience. They say I couldn't do UI. All right. So this dot state dot hub connection dot on, uh, this is basically the pub sub uh, you know, model. For those that don't know that term, uh, pub sub is publish and subscribe. Uh, when I want to subscribe to a magazine, that magazine will then publish uh, a new article or a new uh, issue and will distribute it to everyone that is subscribed to that uh, magazine. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I want to subscribe to any received message uh, event. And if uh, someone does do that, I have two parameters, a nick and a received message. Uh, I'm using the fat arrow here to say that it's inline function. Uh, I take in the text. I'm going to go ahead and format it by basically saying um, what, who sent it. What do they say? Then I'm going to say, hey, messages, this dot state dot messages can cat. Um, shouldn't do that. That's probably bad. No, that's good. All right. Can cat returns a, uh, a new array um, rather than modifying the, the current one. Uh, after taking that, I can then call set state. Um, and I'm basically set, changing the messages that I had up above, which I believe was a, a empty array. And I'm just adding the current messages um, you know, to it. Any questions on that part? Kind of sped up there at the end. So basically what I'm doing is saying, Hey, I'm staying on the line. If you uh, if you have any new issues of received messages, and you know, tell me about you know who said what. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell uh, React, you know, hey, set your state to these additional messages. Um, once I call set state, remember it's gonna call that render function. That render function I have down below. Uh, to kind of dive into what I've done here is that uh, I'm going to return some JSX that just has a div, a input box, uh, a button, and some additional divs down below that will just map whatever is in messages to a JSX uh, span. Um, and since uh, I am mapping multiple elements uh, that are the same, I'm going to go ahead and give it a key. Uh, which is just going to have the index, you know, ha you know, message one, message two, message three, so forth. All right, and the message uh, itself. Right, uh, because I, I want to just uh, transform the, you know, what's in there to the JSX uh, function. Some of you might notice that I have a on change event. This on change event basically changes the state of that earlier property that I set to nothing. So anytime someone uh, starts typing into your text box, uh, it's going it's to go ahead and update that state uh, for a message and then re-render. Now you might be thinking, well, wouldn't that just cause a, a, a circle um, and just keep going and going and going? No. React does a, a pretty good job of saying, okay, what is changing on the DOM, you know, on my virtual DOM, and what I have to render. And it will only 
uh, change what it needs to, to change uh, rather than rendering the entire thing. So it's pretty smart in the algorithms that it, it needs to go ahead and update the DOM. So here I'm grabbing the, uh, the, uh, the input's target value and serving that into a message. Uh, I have a onClick function. That onClick function uh, is basically pointing to my send message uh, function, which I haven't shown uh, but will have defined. Um, and from there, uh, we can jump into the send method. So send message basically is just a, a function. Uh, takes no parameters, doesn't need any. Um, unless you want to uh, perhaps you know, stop uh, propagation or things like that, uh, you can pass in the, the actual event just like you would with jQuery. Uh, you can say e dot prevent it uh, default. Um, here I'm going to say this dot state dot hub connection invoke uh, the send to all method. Some of you may have noticed that that send to all method is the name of the method in my hub uh, controller. Those that don't believe me, here it is. So casing uh, doesn't really matter uh, in this case. Move on. Um, so I can say send to all, and I had two parameters that that method took. It took a, a nick and a message. So, and I'm grabbing that from the current state of that component. Remember, state is uh, immutable. So uh, I trust that when I grab, grab that state, it's going to be the right state. If something happens on that evoke, right now I'm just kicking it to the uh, console. It would be better to, you know, throw up a toaster or, or some kind of alert and say, hey, uh, you know, that message didn't actually get sent. Um, and then after that, um, I'm going ahead and wiping the message uh, by setting the state. Uh, I'm using set state. I'm not actually modifying, the, I'm not saying this dot state dot message is blank. While that will technically work, uh, you're not sending the uh, uh, render, re-render, um, so you're just waiting for something else to update the render. All right. Yep. Yes. I could technically do a dot then. Um, I'm just doing a, a really bad practice of, no, no, you're absolutely right. Um, so that is a promise, so I can be able to say dot then, and after I, I send the thing and it, everything's okay, um, you know, go wipe this message. Uh, what I'm doing here is saying, send this, don't care, uh, wipe it. So talk is cheap. Um, you know, an actual demo doesn't really give much weight unless it actually demos. So, hoping this demos. Um, no, no, I, I ran it. I just haven't ran it offline. So, pretty sure it runs. Nah, I'll just jump on it. So, yeah. Uh, while this compiles, does anyone have questions? Yeah. Put some space in there for time. So did Microsoft. Right. You eventually come off. It's a very old laptop. About like two years. Um. So once this spins up, it's basically uh, going to run the npm start, uh, and then you can be able to. I went and added a, to the layout a chat button, so we don't have to go to slash chat. Um, and it's going. We'll see a prompt that says, you know, what is your name? 
Um, I'll enter my name. I'll open this up again in another browser. Um, and I'll get the same prompt, and I can be able to talk between the two browsers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the, when I first got into this, um, you know, Sigmar stuff, uh, there was m multiple packages out there. Um, one called uh, SignalR dash client, which you would think making a, a React application, which is for the client, that's the one you need. It is not the one you need. Um, there's a small link that says, "Hey, go to this uh, new version." Um, from that point, uh, that old version. Uh, had you do the hub connection differently, um, it was just a, available for you to be able to extract out. Uh, with this new version, as you notice, there's no dash client inside of my uh, chat uh, JS. So they had a dash client here. Um, they took that off. This this uh, latest and greatest for uh, Signal R2. Mind you, I'm using two for the ASP.NET Core. Uh, the other one I believe was using for Signal R1. Uh, just getting into this and doing some uh, Googling, uh, that was not clear to me. Uh, and I lost a lot of hair, as you can tell, uh, from this. Uh, other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Um, as long as you have that hub, uh, you know, casing doesn't matter, but spelling does. Um, uh, start experimenting into taking objects, not just strings, uh, passing that over, passing it back. You can do just about anything. Uh, some of the common uh, questions I, I tend to get is, well, how many connections does this actually hold? Um, that is, how many uh, load balancing can you do? Um, it does do polling. It does you know, manage this up to about, I uh, saw 2,000 connections. Um, but you know, load balancing does help alleviate some of the drop connections. Um, it does reconnect a user uh, when a user drops, so it will try to reconnect you. Yes. Uh, it's handled for you. So the connection, when they get uh, a new connection ID, uh, you can't pull the identity uh, from it and store the, their active connections. Um, basically have, have a backing database uh, to be able to do that translation. So, um, other than that, uh, it's, it's been pretty fast and easy to use. Other than when you first start on a demo. So. Oh, yeah. I guess you want to see that, don't you? Let me go ahead and do this. Alright, so as you saw, I just clicked uh, Chat Hub. It uh, went and did the render, uh, or the um, component did load. I uh, will mount. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in Randall. Uh, here I have a, a normal chat box. And as soon as I click that button, it sent it out to the hub. The hub then uh, rebroadcasts that to everyone else. Uh, or, I guess, sorry, everyone. Um, so I came back, ran that uh, received message. That received message went and updated uh, the uh, messages array and re-rendered 
uh, basically spans that will keep going down. Uh, and it does this in basically near re real time. Yeah, Randall. Yeah. Inside joke with me. <laughs> so, um, but these will basically I can be able to. Um, send it through uh, real time. So things that you can be able to use the, uh, this technology for um, chat applications. Yay. Um, but other than that you can be able to uh, capture, think about capturing a user's mouse uh, you know, XY coordinates. You can then broadcast the XY coordinates to everyone else and be able to paint on a canvas where the, their uh, mouse pointer has clicked. Um, I can be able to uh, make a uh, Google Doc collaborating uh, paint service by just broadcasting the XY coordinates from uh, a user's screen. Stock ticker as well, yeah. Um, you know, the. I, I'm. What's that? The, so, you know, having anything that requires basically real time communication that, uh, you know, email. Uh, it is near real time. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, patient data. Um, you know, I need to be able to know when a patient uh, needs immediate care right now. I do not have to wait 15 seconds. I want to see that, that thing go red and alert someone. Uh, the SignalR can be able to do that. Um, since this is JavaScript, you can be able to run on any um, device. You know, whether it be a browser, uh, desktop application using you know, Electron, um, or uh, I think PWA, although I haven't got into that personally, um, or mobile uh, web applications uh, do work with this. So you're, you'll be able to uh, have a, a communication app um, between a mobile user and a desktop user, and it works seamlessly. I haven't tried that. I would imagine it depends on the bandwidth that you have uh, and how you handle streaming bytes. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't say I've tried. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it and give you a, uh, a link for your comments. That would be cool, though. It, the next Netflix party. Um, but you can, as long as you can be able to serialize the bytes, I, I believe you can you know, make the connection and send it uh, as you're always active. Um, some of the uh, methods that you can be able to override, uh, let me bring up my slides here. Some of the things that we haven't really gotten into but are there. That didn't work. I broke it. All right. So that's broke. I'll get into. I'll get you these slides uh, afterwards. Um, basically, on connect, uh, you can be able to override uh, on your hub. So as the user connects, uh, you can be able to override that method and then take that ID. Uh, assign that ID based off the, uh, the actual user's identity, uh, and then you know make sure you call base on connect so it can finish up the connection. Um, so you can be able to override that. You can be able to override the uh, reconnect. Uh, so a user disconnected is trying to attempt to reconnect. Uh, if they get assigned a new ID, you can be able to replace the old ID with a new one. Um, and you can be able to override the disconnect. So if a user goes ahead and disconnects from your application, uh, you want to know what ID just got disconnected, go update in your application, go broadcast to everyone that, hey, uh, you know, Sally has just left, um, you know, update your user list. So th those are things that you can be able to 
um, play around with the connection wise on your hub. So all other uh, functions are basically whatever uh, remote procedure call that you want to make on, on your application. That doesn't load. Don't, yeah, sorry about that. We'll not use Google Docs on an online presentation offline. All right. Um, any other questions before I wrap up here? Yes. Do everything is signal R, right? So, not everything needs real time communication, right? So that's where I kind of split the line on on REST. If I need, let's say I need to go grab uh, a list of uh, jobs that you know aren't real time, uh, or a list of tasks, and take the to do list. Um, that doesn't really need real-time communication, but I can go and say, hey, go give me, you know, this list and connect to this hub. Uh, so the hub will handle any push notifications that I need, uh, you know, that the task is updated. I'm going to go grab this list uh, and see if the list is actually the same that, you know, the last time I, I, I came here. Uh, so I can start implementing caching, you know, on top of that, that REST-based client. Um, and then use Sig SignalR as the kind of constant updater so I don't have to keep refreshing. Oh yeah, all that's going to go away. Yep. That whole whole action. Yep. Good question. Man. Yes. Kind of. Um, yes. Uh, you can, so because, so let's say I have some kind of, um, let me go back to a thing. So what, what we're asking is basically, can we take a, uh, a hub, chat hub here, um, and have, something called this uh, from the server side. So like maybe like a web job or uh, if you use Quartznet, um, you know, tell it to go ahead and call this function um, on every five minutes, right? Uh, you could be able to say, go ahead and call this hubs function and that hubs function has, um, you know, access to clients and you can then broadcast out um, and kind of do push notifications uh, to all your clients. You could, yes, yep. Yep. You have like a job basically wait, waiting. Yep. Of course, works, man. Um, I, I love using the ground stuff on that. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's absolutely right. So, you know, we just showed uh, the JavaScript side of things. There is a .NET client, um, you know, that you can be able to uh, run and say, hey, give me this connection, just like you saw, you know, JavaScript side, it uses a hub builder. 
you point it to a URL, and then from there you, you go and invoke uh, using async methods. Uh, yeah, you could run a, a WinForm app and, and do this uh, if you're still doing WinForms. So. Hey, there, there's tons of them still out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, WPF, you know, Silverlight. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, all of those are out there, and you know, they have a, a, a core version and a framework version that you can be able to use. Any other questions? Sam, would you like to? I did not think of that slide, but I can, you know, kind of say, you know, all that. Uh, every second Saturday. Yep. Uh, so uh, my, most of my handles online is RS Clapper, C L A P P E R, uh, like clap on, clap off, the clapper. Um, not trademarked by me, um, but uh, uh, you can be able to reach me on Twitter uh, with that. Um, you know, I have a Twitch under the same handle, um, and eventually I will have a, a YouTube channel once I start getting these recorded and edited. Uh, but I do Saturday morning coding where I take a online tutorial and run, you know, whoever joins me in Saturday mornings. They start uh, at 9, 9.30 in the morning. Uh, I go until about lunch or until everyone's hungry and leaves. Um, at that point, uh, the recording goes up. Uh, about a week later um, is the, the current plan for 2020. Um, I'm always open for you know new things. I love learning uh, technology. Um, you know React is my current you know love at the moment, so that's what I'm diving into. But if you guys would like to learn Angular, Vue, or um, you know backend technology, uh, let me know and I'll dive into it with you. Uh, it's just a uh, twitch.tv slash rsclapper. So, I didn't get very creative with the name. So, um, uh, S. So, R, R, Randall Scott Clapper. So, now you know my middle name. Cool. Thank you.